Hey y'all, Mela and Lorla, and it's bright out. It has been so dreary out here for forever. And all of a sudden, it's just gonna be 80 and beautiful, and right after we had tornadoes and stuff, and all the creeks are as muddy as they could be, and you know, we can't go do anything. <laughs> but, yeah, that is what it is. That's the weather here in Alabama. I just thought I'd check in. See how y'all are doing. Um, we're doing pretty okay. I'm out here at what's going to be the corn patch. You can see where I have tilled. It's, uh, it's about 12 by 16, give or take. And I bought a mess of hybrid sweet corn seed today. Let me get over here where I'm not tripping over stuff. I'm trying to get in the shade where y'all can actually see me. Um... Yeah, I bought a mess of a bicolor, you know, it's a mixture of white and yellow corn, um, sweet corn. And I'm going to plant most of this little patch. Um, I have 75 seed, and assuming most of them come up, you know, that's, that's plenty of corn. We also have uh, okra saved over, uh, okra seed. I will go ahead and give you all a warning. I don't know if everybody knows this, but when you buy seed, if you buy a hybrid anything... Generally speaking, it will, like if you try to save the seeds, they will not germinate the next year. That's part of them being a, you know, hybrid blend for the seed companies. They they don't like to breed them to, to where you can propagate them. They want you to buy your, you know, two, three, eight, ten dollars worth, however much you buy each year. So just so you know, you, you buy hybrid corn, it's probably not going to come up to seed next year if you save your seeds. So just dry all your corn out and grind it and whatever you're gonna do um we have plans to if i make a bunch I, I will dry some and make some cornmeal out of it um we have a mill not terribly far from where i live my uh my great uncle he he mostly grows field corn to uh attract the deer and stuff but sometimes he goes and uh plants sweet corn and has it ground up into uh cornmeal um if i make a good little bit i might do that um, they, they ask you to have a certain amount. I'm tripping over a, a blackberry down here. Um, or dewberry. That's dewberry. Anyway, I've talked about that. Um, they want you to have a certain amount. Like, they want to have so many pounds of corn for they really want to grind it for you. But, well, we'll see how much we'll make. But otherwise, you know, I'll take and uh, cut it off the cobs. We will freeze it and can it and you know, do this and that with it. I'll take the cobs and I'll make corn cob wine and corn cob jelly. I was actually just talking to my grandpa about corn cob jelly. It's been forever since I made any and it's so good. Um, it's just like, you know, it's so light and summery and, you know, tasting. So whatever's like middle of winter, it's very nice to like make a bunch of biscuits and put that on there and it's just, it's a taste of a, you know, a different time of year. But we've got that tilled up. Um, <laughs> if y'all want to know how much of a hit I am, and how much I don't like to spend money. Let's see where I've put my, here's my tool. So I don't use a rototiller. I don't use a tractor, even though I have a little tractor. This is my baby right here. I'll get out here and show y'all. So this, you can buy these for not very, very much. I'll show you over here, not in the super bright sunlight. So what you have here is you have is welded out a pipe. It's a handle. And it's rebar with some diamond plate. You see how it's in there? And I'll come up here and show you. All you do is poke that down in the ground. And see if I can do it with one hand around my hip. You twist it. Oh. And you can see, maybe, how that breaks up the dirt. I did this whole plot with that very tool. And I'll do it again because uh, what you do is you take and you do it one time. And you can see we have like some weeds out here. Some of them. You're breaking the roots is mostly what you're doing, turning it over. Uh, you do it one time and you give it a couple weeks and let it, uh, you know, everything come back up that 
didn't get killed. And you turn it over again, like when you and when you turn it over this way, the plants themselves become the mulch, and that'll help you with your uh, fertilizing. I like to mix in my chicken poop with it about that point, and the, the second time, I like to spread the chicken poop first myself, and then till it down. And especially if it rains, like the day after, that'll like get those nutrients down in the soil. It makes a really good garden. Um, but I digress. I'm I'm rambling about that. That's what we got going on here, though. Um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, you know, life for me has been taking care of sickly old folks. My great aunt, uh, I won't lie, she's in... <sighs> she ain't in as bad a shape as Grandma was whenever Grandma was in super, super bad shape, but she's not doing well. I give her, I give her a month or two. Um, and she's got all her stuff in order, but, you know, I go up there every morning and I bring her coffee and, and all that. Um, what else do we have going on, though? We're going to put in our, we have planters over this direction. We are going to put in, uh, uh, tomatoes and we're going to put in bell peppers, I know. My chives will come back out. I can show you my chives. I have had this bucket right here. Uh, this was a compost toilet. Ooh, and I'm getting ants in it. That's okay. You, you, you can't hardly kill them chives, though. We'll get the ants out of it. But these are all chives. I started this from a handful of about maybe six chive plants-ish. And I had that compost toilet out there and filled it up with soil after, you know, we had, it got to where it needed something doing with it. I put a bunch of topsoil on top and have left it. I've had that same bucket of chives for six or seven years now. And it just comes up bigger every time because uh, uh, onions, you know, chives, green onions, onions, garlics do this too. They like to grow out. They like to just shoot off more bulbs and start growing this way underneath the soil instead of just up. So, if you can get a couple of them to take, you'll end up with more underneath the soil and they'll start shooting off different directions. So, I mean, you saw I have a bush of chives right there. Uh, the other thing that we are doing, and this is kind of gross, but this is my project for today, is we have this bucket. And this bucket, let me get a stick is full of deer bones. It is full of deer bones that have been rotten down. Let me get them turned over where you can see them. Deer leg bones, you can see the hooves still on this guy. And it's about done. Um, they are close to done. I'm about to get out here and separate out like all of those little bones for various purposes. Y'all know I'm a blacksmith. I use the, the big leg bones. So let's see if I can get one up to show you. Those big leg bones like that. I make knife handles from those. And people like them. They, 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 they definitely sell good. So I'm about to get out here and uh, mess around with that. And it's gross and it's horrible. It's not as gross as it was. That is our second soak. I let mine... Uh, I take my bones, if I don't want to skin them out and dress them out and all that, I just take the bones, like the deer legs, just the whole leg from, you know, the elbow-ish down, and I put them in a bucket with hardwood ashes, which has lye in it, and that lye eats everything off of it, basically. All the hide and most of the tendons and the connective tissue. And then after so long, I pour it out, and then I will put, depending on what I'm doing with it, um, I don't like to put bleach in it, but I, I put bleach in these because, I mean, these are going to be decorative pieces mostly. Like, I'm going to, like, do stuff with them. I'm going to put designs on them. Um, so, I want to be good and white. So, that's why I did the bleach. Um, but I put bleach and I put dishwashing liquid, which when we don't like dishwashing liquid, I know it's bad for the environment on, on the whole, but... It does strip the grease away from the bones and 
it's the quickest way to do it in my opinion. So I'll put about a quarter cup of Dawn dishwashing and maybe a half cup of bleach in the water and soak them again for three or four days. And that just, everything starts to fall off of it and it makes, it makes life a lot easier. So I'm about to get out here and work on this nasty mess. And I thank y'all so much for, you know, sticking around with me. I'm trying to do regular videos. I think I'm going to do this vlog thing a little more often too. I like talking to y'all. So anyway, um, I will see y'all in the next video. Y'all take care. Bye.